The upcoming learning modules will introduce you to the fundamentals of mechanical ventilation that guide initiation, management, and monitoring of ventilated patients. Solid foundational knowledge of these principles is not just vital, it's empowering. As a clinician, it equips you to provide optimal care to ventilated patients and enhance patient outcomes. Understanding how mechanical ventilators work and their benefits is not just a professional requirement, it's a gateway to better patient care. By grasping these concepts, you can better support patients on mechanical ventilators and potentially enhance their outcomes. Are you feeling apprehensive about learning to use a mechanical ventilator safely? While we will cover adaptive support ventilation in detail in later modules, I wanted to address your concerns directly by making a comparison you can relate to. Video laryngoscopy revolutionized endotracheal intubation. Similarly, the brilliance of adaptive support ventilation simplifies mechanical ventilation. The Hamilton T1, integrated with artificial intelligence, is not just a tool, it's a partner in your patient care journey. It leverages AI, performing thousands of calculations a second to optimize oxygenation, ventilation, and patient comfort breath by breath, becoming an exceptional teacher of ventilation principles. The learning objectives for this first module on mechanical ventilation basics include reviewing the fundamental principles of respiratory physiology, including gas exchange, lung mechanics, ventilation perfusion matching, and the risks associated with mechanical ventilation. The primary goals of mechanical ventilation are to relieve respiratory distress, decrease the work of breathing, improve gas exchange, reverse respiratory muscle fatigue, and provide time for healing of the lungs. Spontaneous breathing is a natural physiological process that requires energy expenditure. It's a process where the individual autonomously regulates the rate and depth of breathing based on physiological needs and feedback from specialized receptors. Importantly, Spontaneous breathing does not involve using positive pressure to inflate the lungs. Instead, air naturally moves into the lungs through negative pressure generated by the contraction of the respiratory muscles. Specifically, the diaphragm drops, pulling air into the tracheobronchial tree, while the intercostal and assisting muscles expand the chest to accommodate the lungs during inhalation. Exhalation during spontaneous breathing and mechanical ventilation is passive. The muscles relax and the chest recoils. The stark contrast between spontaneous and mechanical ventilation is a crucial concept to grasp. In spontaneous breathing, the individual autonomously regulates the rate and depth of breathing while in mechanical ventilation, the ventilator delivers positive pressure breaths, significantly reducing the energy expenditure required for spontaneous breathing. Understanding this contrast is vital to comprehending the benefits and implications of mechanical ventilation for patients with respiratory compromise. The upper respiratory tract warms and humidifies atmospheric air as it enters the airways. 
The negative pressure generated by the respiratory muscles pulls air into the lower airways and the alveoli where gas exchange occurs. The alveolar capillary membrane lines the respiratory bronchioles, providing a diffusion pathway where oxygen and carbon dioxide between inspired air and blood occurs. Oxygen from the air diffuses into the bloodstream and carbon dioxide diffuses into the alveoli to be exhaled. Ventilation refers to the movement of gas between the atmosphere and the alveoli during inspiration and expiration. Perfusion is the movement of blood through the pulmonary capillaries. A good match between perfusion or blood supply and ventilation or gas supply must be present for optimal gas exchange. Mismatches occur due to various causes. For example, a pulmonary embolus, shock, too much positive end expiratory pressure, and excessive tidal volumes could result in problems with perfusion. Atelectasis, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and pneumonia will impact ventilation, causing a well-perfused but poorly oxygenated lung. While positive pressure ventilation offers significant benefits, it is vital to be aware of the potential risks. Increasing the pressure in the lungs can lead to barotrauma, causing complications like pneumothorax. High pressure ventilation can cause mechanical stress and strain on the lungs, leading to ventilator-induced lung injury. This may manifest as alveolar damage, inflammation, and impaired gas exchange. Positive pressure ventilation can also affect cardiac function and hemodynamics, potentially leading to hypotension. Your awareness of these risks is crucial in providing safe and effective patient care and understanding them will help you mitigate these risks in your practice.